Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to read a file into R. So, uh, I've got my blank R studio in front of me here and I'd like to be able to read in a small data set uh, into R so that I can then perform some um, activities and analysis on that data set. The sample data file that I'm going to use, I'm going to show it here in Excel, is a simple data set. It contains uh, 12 monthly values uh, for the price of a barrel of oil in dollars and it also contains a second variable called gold which shows the price in dollars for ounce of gold over a 12 month period. So I'd like to be able to read this data file into R so that I can then perform further analysis. So uh, let's first of all uh, pick a name for uh, when we read our data set we need to store it in a variable and I'm going to call that variable price data so P-R-I-C-E data and I'm going to assign it using the assignment operator and use a function to read the CSV file in. So the function name is a, a handy name, it's READ.CSV, read.csv. So this is the function we're obviously going to use to read our CSV file in. Uh, if you want to learn more about the read.csv function, you can of course go to the help tab in the bottom right hand corner of um, our studio and read, type in read.csv in the search bar and you will get a description and a full list of all the syntax that you may, we might use from time to time and some examples for the read.csv function. I'm just checking back to the files tab here. So the first thing I need to do uh, with the read.csv function is pass some parameters into the function. Now I'm going to choose three here. I want to be able to tell read.csv what the name of the file is, the fact that the first line in my file is being used as a header, and also that it is a CSV file using commas to separate the values. So read.csv in, in the brackets here, I need to give it the file name is equal to and in inverted commas we type in the file name. Now I'm uh, reading the file from my working directory so I don't need to um, uh, list a long path. So uh, the file name here is if I scroll over to the right hand side the file name is checked here is 07 underscore data underscore file dot csv. So I need to type it in in the middle of the inverted commas here exactly as we see it on the list. So the, whatever the data file name is we need to put it in exactly here. So that means upper and lower case letters much ma must match what the file name is. So once we typed in the file name I uh, put in a comma and I need some extra space here so I'm going to move down to the next line so press enter after the comma. The second parameter I want to pass to the read.csv function is the fact that my data set contains a header. So just to recap, our first line line number one is being used as a header so I don't want R to do any calculations with the first line so we wanted to ignore that first line so we use the parameter called header and we tell it that this is true so there is a header in my data set um, I finish that off with a comma I'm going to press enter again to move down to a, a third line for this uh, line of code and the last bit I want to do is indicate that the commas are being used in this CSV file to separate the values. So SEP is the parameter is equal to, and we need inverted commas, and whatever symbol is being used as the separator, in our case it's a comma, put that in between the two uh, inverted commas as you see on line 5. So to recap very quickly what we're doing here, we're creating a new variable called price data. We're going to store the contents of the file in this variable. So we're doing that using the read.csv function. We need to tell it three things at minimum. We need to tell it the name of the file. Again, being careful with the syntax and the upper and lower cases here. We also need to tell it if there's a header in the file that that is true. And finally, to tell it what symbol is being used as a, as a separator in my file. So let's go ahead now and run that. Now uh, we can see our code is replicated in the console but there's no output but we can now tell that uh, using the environment tab over here on the right hand side uh, that uh, we have a new variable called price data and we have its indication of that there are 12 observations of two variables in our studio if I click on the little uh, white play button here and so expand uh, price data we can see that the first variable is called oil and it's got its 12 values inserted and the second variable is called gold with all its values here all integers being shown here. So we now know that the, our, our, our file has been read in. There's a couple of other useful things that you might use to help you uh, check the contents of the file. So first of all, um, um, let's use the head function to display the first six lines of my data set. Your ICE's data. 
So again, being careful with the syntax in the upper and lower cases. So when I run this line, we can see in the output uh, that the head function displays the first six lines of my data set. So that's very, very handy, particularly if you want to see what the names of the variables are and whether they're upper or lower case. Uh, equally, you can look at the last six lines using the tail function and price date again. So run this line and it shows us the final six lines. Note when, if I can expand this up here, that when we uh, look at the two uh, head and the tail functions, um, that we can see that the uh, or has added in, uh, it looks as though it's added in an extra column, but these are just labels, one to six showing the first six lines, seven to 12 to show, show the last six lines in my data set. Finally, if I want to know how many um, uh, lines there are in my data set in total, I can choose um, the n row function. Again, put in the name of the variable that I stored my data in, its price data. Okay, watch out for typos. Uh, run that. And we can see that um, n row price data is t indicating that there are 12 rows in our data set. So these are uh, not terribly useful in a small data set like they are example here, but a much larger data set with thousands and millions of rows of data. These can be very, very useful functions. So that's how we read a file into R and check uh, some basic contents in the file. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.